to be able to show people that it is possible to overcome these symptoms. That you are not doomed to a certain destiny because you had myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis symptoms can be visually devastating or largely go unnoticed in society. As an MG patient myself, I have lived through both these scenarios and in this video I'm going to use footage of my symptoms in the past as well as recreated footage to try and visually explain these myasthenia gravis symptoms. Hi guys, my name is Ross. If we haven't met before, I'm a myasthenia gravis patient. And like I mentioned in the intro, in this video, I'm going to explain um, the myasthenia gravis symptoms. Firstly, running through ocular symptoms, mainly ptosis uh, and diplopia, and then into general myasthenia symptoms involving weakness of the jaw um, and the limb muscles mainly. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to explain how I used symptoms to my advantage, why I didn't necessarily cover up some of my symptoms and what they were able to teach me that allowed me to recover to this point now. So firstly, ocular myasthenia gravis. Uh, the two main symptoms for ocular myasthenia are ptosis and then diplopia. Now ptosis is when basically your eyelid droops, so naturally also known as a droopy eyelid. And this is happening because your muscles tire and you cannot keep that eyelid open. So often how a doctor would test it if you had myasthenia gravis would get you to look up um, either at a pen or at the ceiling for about a minute and then generally you'll see a patient with myasthenia the eyelid will start to droop. So in the beginning I had a very clear uh, droopy eyelid or a case of ptosis um, but now for example I could stare up almost indefinitely and my eyelid would not fall. The second ocular myasthenia symptom is diplopia. Now diplopia is also known as double vision um, and it's one that I've been able to recreate using this picture um, and now I've taken some video footage to try and explain how diplopia affects people or myasthenia patients in their day-to-day -day life. So diplopia affected me quite a lot uh, in the beginning when I was diagnosed with myasthenia. Uh, it's, it's very difficult for people to conceptualize how difficult it is for somebody with double vision. Diplopia affects you from little things such as driving um, to watching something on a screen or writing on a page. The fact that your eyes are not working together and you're having this double vision allows you or hinders you from being able to do something which is considered normal. So diplopia also, it messes with your depth of perception. Um, so one of the things that I did to stop the double vision allowed me to carry on studying and writing my exams was to use an eye patch. The problem is that when you cover one of your eyes, you lose depth of perception. So it's very dangerous to drive uh, in that position, for example, because you cannot tell the distance um, between objects coming towards you. Uh, a good way to, to see that for yourself is if you covered one eye um, and then try to catch a ball. It's very difficult to position your hands in the right position to catch that ball. So I've got a couple examples of how um, double vision and ptosis affected me. Um, as I've done in this clip here, driving, uh, it's very obvious to see how the two images are being seen individually fine by each eye, but they're not being mapped together. So the one area where double vision really affected me was at my job at the time when I was diagnosed. Um, I was a wine server or waiter uh, and I really struggled to pour the wine and actually led to me stopping. One of the main reasons why I stopped my job. Uh, I remember one evening especially I left the restaurant in a bit of a state because I had missed uh, the customer's glass and poured wine all over the table. So it's, it's, it's a very difficult thing for someone to realize, but basically you're seeing two images of the glass um, and it's difficult to know which is actually the correct image. And as a result, I poured wine down the side of the glass and onto the table. Another area in day-to-day -day life where double vision or diplopia affected me was shaving. Um, and this is a symptom that actually stayed with me for about a year after I had been declared in remission. Um, and it was noticeable when shaving on the one side of my face. Basically, I still was pretty much symptom-free, 
Um, but if I looked in the mirror at a certain angle, I would get double vision on that side. So it was my left hand side shaving that I still experienced double vision. Now currently in 2019, it's been about two years since I've experienced some of these symptoms. So I'm pleased to report that I don't have any more of these uh, double vision symptoms at any stage. So ptosis was also a problem for me when driving. Um, if I had too much direct sunlight in my eye, it would cause my eyelid to droop. Um, at some stage I actually had to stop driving, get out and ask somebody else to drive my car back home um, because I couldn't uh, open my eyes. So that was quite scary at that stage and especially uh, in one incident when my car actually cut out, just a bit of stress in that situation. Basically both my eyes shut um, and I couldn't drive home. So moving on to the general myasthenia symptoms, uh, firstly just going to talk about general muscle fatigue. Um, and the word fatigue is quite a difficult one to describe. It's actually used very loosely in today's society. Uh, people just explaining that they are tired often say they're fatigued. But fatigue is very different. Um, chronic fatigue being when people sleep enough but they're still tired when they wake up. I'm not talking about that yet. Um, but muscle fatigue being if you use the same muscle over and over, um, its ability to do work is severely compromised. So at the hospital when they test if your muscles are fatiguing, they'll basically get you to spin them round and round for about 30 seconds and then try and push them or break them down after that. And if it's severely weaker than prior to doing that 30 seconds, then they know that you have or could be expressing some myasthenia symptoms. So the general myasthenia symptoms that I experienced at work, uh, once again with regard to pouring wine, uh, when my symptoms got really bad, I stopped working um, because I couldn't hold the wine bottle correctly anymore. I actually had to use two hands to grip the bottle and pour um, and almost get the bottle to touch the rim so that I wouldn't miss the glass. I couldn't hold the bottle with one hand. Um, it would literally just slip out of my grip. I couldn't grip it strongly enough. Um, so I would have to pour wine with two hands. It seems trivial, but it's just a pure indication of how weak the grip strength was at that stage. So most of the symptoms I'm described have been, for me, they were from about 2015 to up until basically the beginning of 2018. I still had some lingering diplopia. Uh, but for the last almost two years now, I haven't had any actual myasthenia gravis symptoms. Um, I'm still having one or two thyroid issues, mainly resulting in a lot of fat general fatigue. Um, but I'm actually clear of any myasthenia symptoms of an, and have been declared in remission uh, for the last two, two and a half years. So this is really not to say or blow my own trumpet. This is to show everyone that it is possible to go from some really debilitating uh, symptoms to being in a medication-free remission. So the point of me showing my symptoms is really to be able to explain to people what some of these symptoms look like, especially diplopia, for example. Um, and then also to be able to show people that it is possible to overcome these symptoms. One of the things I want to do with this channel is to show people that it is possible to regain your health um, and that you're not doomed to a certain destiny because you had myasthenia gravis. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like. Um, consider subscribing to my channel if you do have myasthenia gravis and you would like more information on my story or how I got to my remission or what I do that has allowed me to get to this point in my recovery. So for those that have watched this far, uh, in the intro I mentioned that I used symptoms to my advantage. What do I mean by that? Basically, I see myasthenia as being obviously a disease of malnutrition or lack of health. So I knew that as long as I had symptoms, I wasn't healthy. Um, so I didn't see them as a negative. I just, it was an indicator for me that something still needed to change. So I was sort of guided by, as long as I still had symptoms, I knew I had to make changes. And once I started seeing improvements, I knew the changes that I had made were sustainable um, and I could decrease my medication and still see these improvements, then I knew I was going in the right direction. If you are interested, um, you can look at some of my other videos for more information that I've done before.